This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A warm welcome to each and every one of you, especially an extra warm welcome to all of our mothers that are here today, and also to the man-wearing family on the baptism of Blair. I would call any children who would like to witness the baptism close up to come forward at this time. Please rise. Jules, you come forward. You guys can come closer. We begin on page 268. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful, and under the power of the devil until Christ claims us at his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How are you named? Blair Ann Manner. <clears throat> Blair, receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Blair as sponsors in the Christian faith? Yes, with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Please be seated. Blair, do you desire to be baptized? Yes. Blair Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has given you new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which will have no end. Holy baptism, God the Father, has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven, and the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we may hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. Peace be with you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us, let us pray together. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have awakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follows where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter is from Acts, the 20th chapter. Now from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time, from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials, that happened to me through the plots of the Jews, how I did not shrink 
from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance towards God and to the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and infliction await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I have received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away from the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands minister all my necessities and to those who were with me. And all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from the Revelation to St. John, the seventh chapter. After this, I looked and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their face before the throne and worshiped God saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are these clothed in white robes and for where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. And they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them by day, nor the, any scorching heat. For the Lamb is in the midst of the throne, will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? 
If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, or as most of us know it, Mother's Day. I recently read a study that said, a mother's voice is far more important than we ever realized. Let me read you the background. Conventional residential tone smoke alarms fail to awake the majority of children during slow wave sleep. With the objective of identifying a more effective smoke alarm for children, a study was done using their mother's voice as the smoke alarm compared with a conventional residential tone smoke alarm, both presented at 100 decibels. Each child's mother's voice was recorded in the alarm It said the child's name, wake up, wake up, get out of bed, and leave the room. And then they compared that to the effectiveness of a standard tone smoke alarm you typically have in your home. The results were stunning. 96% of the children awakened to their mother's voice alarm compared with only 58% to the tone alarm. 83% of the children in the mother's voice alarm group completed the escape procedure completely and without fail within five minutes of the alarm going off, with only 38% in the tone alarm group doing the same. The median time it took to awaken was 20 seconds in the voice alarm group compared with three minutes in the tone alarm group. I guess a mother's voice matters. Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me, and I give them eternal life. They shall never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. During the past few weeks, our ears have heard a news of bombings in Sri Lanka, shootings on school campuses, tariffs in China, and the U.S. sending ships in the Middle East. I have to ask, in light of today's scriptures, do we, in the midst of the breaking news and noises of the world around us, clearly hear our shepherd's voice? You and I know the voices of the world all too well. 
Do whatever it takes to succeed. Always look out for number one. You can be anything you want to be. Just believe in yourself. Do whatever makes you happy. You're not hurting anyone but yourself. That drug, that sin, that pain will take away the, that pill will take away the pain. It's okay to look as long as you don't touch. Life's voices often accuse us of being out of control and then lure us with the promises of being able to take control if we just have this product or that. The problem is that the noise of these worldly voices can keep us from hearing Jesus' true voice in our lives. God's voice tells us that we belong to something bigger than we are, something stronger than any of the troubles that we face, someone who will love us all the way through life and through death. Jesus' voice reminds us that you and I belong. My sheep hear my voice. The shepherd knows his sheep. He knows that you and I will do some stupid things. He knows that you and I are weak, but the shepherd also knows our value and has decided that you and I are worth everything, even his own life. We hear the voices and noises of the world with terrifying clarity, but deeper still is the voice of Jesus for each and every one of us. The voice of the shepherd tells us we belong to him. The voice of the shepherd reminds us that we are held forever in the everlasting arms of Jesus and that he knows us by name. Listen for, get to know and hear the voice of the shepherd. Let it connect to you during your days and let it comfort you during the dark nights. To hear the voice of the shepherd is to do God's will. It's to follow the Ten Commandments. It's to love your neighbor more than yourselves and to forgive even when you've been hurt badly. Today, thanks be to God, we are blessed to celebrate another baptism, another child that has heard the voice of Jesus calling them to be his very own. Blair, I know you can hear me. I want you to continue to listen to the voice of your mom not just because she's your mom, but because your mom's voice is the voice of Jesus, who points you to your heavenly Father, who sent his only begotten Son, Jesus, to be your good shepherd, and gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit to strengthen the sound of his voice now and forever. The problem with listening to the voices of this world is that they often lead us astray and compete with the voice of Jesus, who is the perfect voice that will never lead us astray. Jesus is here today calling us to the font, the altar, and the pop, and the pulpit with the viva vox, the very living voice of Jesus. But too often we hear everything but the voice of our Savior because we aren't willing to listen. We don't always want to hear what Jesus has to say. So we tune it out, Instead, listen to the things we want to hear. Here's a story that highlights that so very well. Two men were walking down a crowded street in New York City. One of them all of a sudden remarked, listen to the lovely sound of that cricket. But the other man could not hear. He asked his friends how he could hear the sound of the cricket amid the roar of the traffic and the sound of the people. The first man was a zoologist. He had trained himself to hear the sounds of nature. He didn't explain to his friend in words how he could hear the cricket, but instead he reached into his pocket, pulled out a half dollar, dropped it on the sidewalk, and watched intently as dozens of people began to look for the coin as they heard it clanking around the sound of the traffic and sounds of the city. He turned to his friend and said, we hear what we listen for. 
Here's your one takeaway. We live in a world that has so many voices, but we are called to listen only to the voice of the good shepherd. Without having a shepherd, the sheep have no sense of direction. The voice of strangers quickly lead them away. But Jesus is the good shepherd, the one who always promises to keep us under his care. He knows us and he knows our voice and he listens and we listen to him. Thanks be to God that no matter what we do, we always have the voice of Jesus who calls us home when we've gone astray. My sheep hear my voice, I know them. They follow me, I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish, and no one, not anyone, will snatch them out of my hand. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For your holy Christian church, O Almighty Father, especially the persecuted Christians in India, Iran, Syria, and Nigeria, and throughout the world, and for the Lutheran Church in the Philippines. Lord, in your mercy, for all pastors, O Good Shepherd, especially Matthew, our Synod's president, Timothy, our district president, Mark, our circuit visitor, Josman, our pastor, and for all those who serve your church, that in all things they speak the truth in love and be faithful in their witness. Lord, in your mercy, for those in need of your healing, touch your great physician, especially Olivia, Marcy, Kevin, Bernadette, Thomas, and Bonnie, Judy, Arnold, Herbert, Pauline, Ken, Carol, and Donna, Alice, Sue, Joyce, June, Susan, Judy, Jerry, Connie, and Cheryl. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who celebrate the gift of life, O Creator, blessed, especially Jared. Preston, Bryce, and Lester, Lord, in your mercy, for all those who celebrate the gift of baptism, O triune God, especially Jim, Janet, Sophie, Megan, Zoe, Scott, Carol, and Blair, who was brought to the waters of holy baptism this morning, Lord, in your mercy, for all caregivers, O strength of the weak, especially be with those who care for their loved ones. Help them not to grow tired and weary but to find their strength in you. Lord, in your mercy, for all mothers, O giver of all good gifts, especially for all our mothers here today, and for those who struggle in their relationship with their moms, and those who miss their moms, or those who wish they could be moms, continue to give them good and gracious work here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, for those who celebrate the gift of marriage, O heavenly bridegroom, especially for Donald and Alice, Lord, in your mercy, for those who come to your altar this day, O risen Lord, especially that we would hear your living voice, let the light of Christ shine in our lives, and that partaking you in this most holy supper, we would receive your holy touch and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, in your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Thank you.